Okay, our goal for this video is, say we're given a level surface, f of x, y, z equals k. So in other words, f is a function of three variables, and we set it equal to a constant. That's gonna give us some sort of uh, three-dimensional object. Okay, and we wanna find a tangent plane to this surface at some point x naught, y naught, z naught. In other words, if we plug x naught, y naught, z naught into this, we get a satisfied equation. Okay, so how we're gonna do this is in the following way. So let's suppose that we have a curve r of t on the surface defined by f x, y, z equals k, okay? So in other words, we could say r of t has vector equation x of t, y of t, z of t. Okay, so let's look at a little picture of that. So let's say our surface is this sphere, then uh, maybe our r of t is some sort of curve on the sphere like that. So this would be like r of t, and this would be f of x, y, z equals k. Okay, good. So now, notice what that gives us is that f of x of t, y of t, z of t equals k. We know that because the curve is lying on the surface, so every point on the curve satisfies this surface equation. Now we're going to differentiate this thing with respect to t using the chain rule. So notice we've got this tree dependence of f. f depends on x, it depends on y, and it depends on z. And each of those depend on the underlying variable t. So if we take the derivative of this with respect to t, we can use this uh, chain rule built off of this tree diagram. So we'll get the partial of f with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to t. So that's going down this branch. We'll get the partial of f with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to t. That's going down this center branch. Then finally, we'll get the partial of f with respect to z times dz dt, and that's going down this last branch. Then we also have to take the derivative of the right-hand side, but that's a constant given that this is a level surface, so we get zero there. Now, notice we can decompose this left-hand side into a dot product. So that left-hand side is exactly equal to f sub x, f sub y, f sub z. So that's what I'm using new notation here. And then dotted with uh, the x with the vector made by x prime, y prime, z prime, where I'm using primes to mean derivative with respect to t. And then we have this is equal to zero. But now notice that this is exactly equal to the gradient of f dotted with the derivative of r equals zero. Okay, good. And now let's look at the takeaway of this. So the takeaway is that the gradient of f is perpendicular to the tangent plane. So how do we know that? Well look, the gradient of f is perpendicular to every tangent vector. We see that because r prime gives us a tangent vector, but this r is an arbitrary curve, so we can get all tangent vectors by looking at all such r. But then when we dot this gradient with the r prime and we get zero, that's the same thing as saying this gradient is uh, orthogonal to all tangent vector vectors. In other words, it is normal to the plane. And then um, let's recall that we need a normal vector to find an equation of a plane, and we also need a point on the plane. Well, we have a point on the plane, now we have a normal vector on the plane. So I'll clean up the board, we'll write a summary, and we'll do some examples. Okay, good. So, as a summary, let's recall that the plane t 
tangent to this level surface at the point x naught y naught z naught has a normal vector given by the gradient at that point. In other words, the vector built by the partial with respect to x at that point, the partial with respect to y at that point, and the partial with respect to z at that point. Okay, so let's look at an example. The tangent plane of x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1 at this point, 1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2. So we've got a point, now we just need a normal vector. So notice that's going to be uh, this gradient of this function. So this function is the playing the role of capital F in this case. So notice that's going to give us 2x, 2y, 2z. And now we need to plug in our point 1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2. Great. But now notice that's going to give us uh, 2 over root 2, 0, 2 over root 2. Okay, but um, we can scale that because all we want is a normal vector. We don't actually care its magnitude. Notice we can scale that down to 1, 0, 1. Great. But now what we have is we have a point on the plane and we have a vector normal to that plane and we can use the equation of the plane built off of that point. So that's going to give us 1 times x minus 1 over root 2 plus 0 times y minus 0 plus 1 times z minus 1 over root 2 equals 0. Okay, cool. Now we can easily solve that for z, and let's see what we get. So this part's going to cancel, and then we can move the x over. We'll get negative x, and now notice that these two are going to add up. We'll get 2 over root 2, but 2 over root 2 is just root 2 in the numerator, and then those will be positive on this side. So I believe we will get that as the equation of the plane. All right, good. So I think this is a good place to stop.